for this another Lord's Day. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you, O Lord God, that you have chosen us, you have called us to yourself. You've called us out of darkness into your marvelous light to show forth your praises in the earth. And so we give you thanks this morning. You said we didn't choose you, you chose us. And you have appointed us to go and produce lasting fruit so that our Father in heaven will give us whatever we ask for using your name. And this commandment you also gave us, and that is to love each other. And so Father, we invoke afresh the presence and power of your love, your agape amongst us. And so for every soul that's looking in, that will join us today, that will tap into this uh, presentation of your word and ministry, may they experience the great love that you have demonstrated to us all. And may it reverberate in our homes, in our marriages, in our relationships, in our communities, in our workplace, uh, in every engagement that we have with our neighbors, with our children, with our parents, with strangers, with those that are in need of what you have provided. And so may the power of the gospel of Jesus be with us and active through our lives to accomplish your will and your purpose for this hour and the season that we're in. We pray for your healing presence to be with us as we walk through your word today. Most importantly, may the power of the gospel to save souls be with us, O oh God. And so we pray for the soul that looks in, that visits maybe even a moment uh, with your word being spoken today and declared. And not only with us, but with every ministry that's presenting the gospel through this medium and those that have continued in return to gather in their sanctuaries and those that are out within the public ranks declaring the gospel all across this globe. May the power of your gospel reach lost souls, bringing men, women, boys, and girls into right relationship with you so that we may be ready upon your return. And so we give you thanks and praise on this day. Be glorified. Uh, move amongst us. Speak to our greatest need even in this moment, we pray. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you honor. And we give you glory. It's in the strong name of Jesus the Christ that we pray. Amen and amen. Well, glory. Good morning. Good morning to the Powerhouse Church of God family. Uh, we're glad to be with you once again through this medium, through Facebook. And for those that will look uh, in with us later, uh, we'll post this again on YouTube in a recording. And so hopefully it will be a benefit for those that look in. We thank you for joining us today. And uh, we pray God's blessings upon your house, upon your relationships, your marriage, uh, your families with your children and children with their parents. Uh, we speak the peace of God, the presence of God, and the love of God. There are things that only God can provide, and we pray that you will be able to draw uh, from that fresh knowledge and reminding 
that God is very present with you and able to do just what you need for him to do. And uh, the greatest provision that he's made for all of us is to reconcile our souls with him. And so I declare, and I know Sister Simon will declare the same, this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Powerhouse Church of God. Uh, we are located at 4300 Power Boulevard, and I'm giving you that address because we are gathering next Sunday. Uh, after a long time being uh, away from our location, we will be gathering together with some, some guidelines and restrictions, but it'll be a great Father's Day celebration. Uh, we will be gathering for 30 minutes uh, for an hour, and then uh, we will uh, celebrate the fathers, and uh, we'll have, again, some restrictions, but we're getting back together, and, and I want to personally thank all those that came out on yesterday. I know Sister Simon probably will say something about that in a moment, but those that came out on yesterday to help us to kind of get things physically back in order and to move out some stuff that's been in the way for a long time, things that have been sitting around for about a year and a half, untouched, unmoved, and uh, we had a good time fellowshipping yesterday. So I'm gonna ask Sister Simon to come with the scriptures and announcements, and then we will render to you the word of God for today and again. I, I trust the presence and power of Almighty God with us uh, to make this word, this ministry of benefit to those that are looking in, those that are listening in today. Uh, God bless you and his blessings upon you. It's good to see those that are joining us right now. Uh, so Sister Simon come, uh, she's going to uh, read the scripture and uh, any other announcements and uh, uh, recognitions that she's led to do. Sisters Hyman, if you would. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're rejoicing, and we're glad in it. We thank you for joining us this morning, and we praise God for you. I'll be reading this morning from Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you'll be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. And she said she wanted the wisdom that it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig trees together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking in the garden so they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked, have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The Lord God, and his word is blessed this morning. Uh, we thank you. I wanna personally thank each of you that 
came out uh, on yesterday and helped us uh, declutter the building in preparation for our service on next Sunday at 1030 for one hour. Um, we will not have Sunday school, nor will we have a children's church. Uh, and we will have Sunday school online as well as Wednesday night Bible study will continue online. Uh, we're going to take it slowly, but we're glad and we're rejoicing that we're back in fellowship. We thank God for you. Uh, those who were not able to come out, but were there in spirit and donations, we give God the glory for you. And we thank you for helping us get our building in order uh, so that we can come back and be refreshed. We ask that you would uh, come wearing mask and we were gonna obey, we are going to obey uh, the guidelines that have been set before us by the CDC. So we are thanking God for you and we look forward to having a blessed time as we celebrate all of our fathers. We thank God for them and for the men that they have become for the dads, for the fathers, for the godly examples that they are. We thank God for you and have a blessed day. And thank you once again for joining us. Amen. Thank you, Sister Simon. Uh, good morning again. And uh, thanks for all of those announcements. Hopefully you've taken some notes there. And uh, we'll be gathering on next Sunday. We will give you a little more insight and guidance uh, by Wednesday or in the coming days, we'll send out notifications along that line. A uh, couple of things I want us to continue to pray. We have a prayer list that we share. I'll update it uh, accordingly, and uh, perhaps I'll get it out uh, later today with the updates. Uh, our sister Ernestine is still in Houston, so keep her lifted up in prayer. She has another a doctor's appointment to, uh, to verify uh, the treatment that she has received there to make sure that it's it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So keeps us earnest in prayer. We mentioned uh, last Wednesday and perhaps last Sunday about Pastor uh, David Radford and his wife Sue up in uh, DeSoto, Louisiana, needing our continued prayer. There is There are good reports of good progress that he's making. He's been in hospital with COVID and so keep them lifted up in prayer. Uh, I do want to make this uh, announcement so that we can pray. Sister Patricia made us aware that she lost one of her best friends back in Toledo, and so she's grieving uh, along with that family, so keep her lifted up in prayer. You might want to send Sister Patricia a little note letting her know that you're standing with her in prayer, if you would. Uh, and Sister Simon already gave us some directions from and recognitions from yesterday's cleanup. And so I want to thank you. So here we are. Uh, let's go ahead with the word. Sister Simon read from Genesis chapter 3, the book of beginnings. Uh, it's prompted to speak along this line. Uh, uh, next week is Father's Day and and on my notes, I made this question, where are you, as a part one. So this is kind of a Father's Day message, uh, part one. Part two will be next week and in the assembly of the saints of God. But where are you? And uh, I was stirred in my own spirit because, uh, as many pastors do, uh, when we get prompted in the Word to study the Word or prepare the message, the message first applies to us. I have to take it uh, internally, uh, the application, and what is God speaking to me, and what would he have me speak to the people of God. And so Sister Simon read from Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 uh, through 11. The book of beginnings. This is where it all began. And I submit to you that this question that Jesus, that the Father, God the Father, spoke to Adam is a question that still applies to us today. 
It applies to me. Uh, it applies to you. The question God is speaking is, where are you? Where are you? And it's very important that we answer the question truthfully. <laughs> Let's go into the word and we will expound on this and hopefully we'll be done in a few moments. But Genesis chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 11, I want to give some uh, introduction through scripture so that we can get a sense of how important this question is for us to answer. Uh, I'm going to go to the writings of the Apostle John. He, uh, he's, he's declared through scriptures to be the closest apostle. Uh, he even wrote in one of his writings that uh, in a kind of a third person about himself, he's the apostle whom the Lord loved. Mm -hmm. And so he was closest to Jesus. He wrote in his first letter, chapter two, uh, verse one. Uh, I, I love to allow the scriptures to speak to us in my message. And uh, I, I like to think it makes it easier for me because I don't want to feel like I'm trying to twist the word or make it palatable for you so that you can understand or receive something. I want the word to speak as God has spoken so that we can get the essence of it and it can do what only it can do because the word of God will set us free. First John chapter two, verse one, he says, my dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. This is John writing to those whose lives he has touched. He's writing to the churches. He's writing to us. He says, I'm writing this to you so that you will not sin. Uh, right off the bat, I want us to know is that our it's incumbent upon us. It's a demand of our lives. It's an expectation of our lives from God, our creator and our father, because he sent his son so that we may be enabled to avoid sin, to be removed from the power of the sin yes. and that our lives will continue without sin. Yes. And so John is reminding us, I'm write, writing you so that you will not sin. And, and here I, I want to put in the emphasis that I believe this Holy Spirit wants us to hear. And I, I, I want, if nothing else, and I think I've had a message a few times where I've put this emphasis in, notice that the scriptures often use the word if in the scriptures. And, and when, when, when the scriptures use if, it gives us a sense that it's a choice that we make. We have freedom to choose. Yes. But, but it gives us that there's an alternative to us not doing. Mm -hmm. And so John says, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself, verse 2 says, is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, and not only our sins, but the sins of the whole world. Amen. Verse 3 says, and we can be sure that we know him. We can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. Yes, amen. And so we can get a sense that from the scriptures as an expectation that we have to choose not to sin. We're going to be faced, and we, if we're honest, is that we have those presentations and opportunities every day to choose to do what's right, uh, or choose not to do what's right. Amen. And so, uh, however, we know, the scripture says we can be sure we know 
Christ. We know God. We know our Father if we obey his commandments. But verse 4 says to us, if someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, mm -hmm. that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. Amen. And so the scriptures put this out. This is not just Pastor Simon saying, yeah. if you claim that I know God, God is my Father, my God, my Savior, my Deliverer, and you continue in sin, the scripture calls you a liar. Amen. Amen. And that, those are harsh words. Yeah. But that's the word of God making that declaration. Yes. Verse 5 says, but those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is how we know we are living in him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Yes. Again, this is the apostle that Jesus loved the one that was closest to him. He's saying that you show how much you love God by walking in obedience. Amen. Amen. I hear in my spirit even the scripture that says, Jesus says, if you say you love me, why don't you do what I say? Amen, amen, amen. Let me move on. Now, because there's something about obedience, there's something about walking in truth, there's something about knowing truth. Yes. And the knowing is not just a, 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 a knowledge in your mind and knowing what's truth, but it's, it's an intimate knowledge. Actually, I shared this a few Sundays ago, knowing and being a disciple of truth is obeying that truth that you know. Amen. Ah, glory. That's where John 8, 32, uh, it, you remember, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Knowing that truth. Yes, it's, it's not, hallelujah, <laughs> it's not just the truth that sets you free, it's the truth that you know, that you know intimately, and you obey. It sets you free. Amen. John 14, we're using John, the, the, the apostle that's closest to Jesus, the one that Jesus loved. And he's speaking, Jesus, uh, in John 14, 6. 14, 6, we often quote this scripture when we, at, at funerals and such because we, we, we talk about uh, Jesus going and prepare a way uh, uh, for those that... Uh, uh, or, or as he said, I got, I'm going to prepare a place for you so that when I come, amen, you can be with me. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and Thomas said, how can we know the way? And Jesus responded, John 14, 6 says, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The emphasis I want to make by quoting that particular scripture is not only Jesus is the way, and the life, he says, I am the truth. And that truth that you know, that's me, Jesus says, that sets you free. Mm. Let me go on, and I'm going to use a little more of what John says in 1 John chapter 2. This is down at verse 24. We're going to move on through the scriptures. So verse 24 of 1 John chapter 2. So you must remain faithful. See, there, there, there's another word that says there's an obligation that we have to continue. We have a choice. It says, so you must remain faithful to what you have been taught from the beginning. John says, if you do, if you remain, you will remain in fellowship with the Son and with the Father. Amen. Amen. We must remain in fellowship with the Son and with the Father. Verse 25, and in this fellowship we enjoy the eternal life he promised us. Verse 26, I am writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray. Pause for a moment because there are those that want to lead you, us astray. And so that you can understand where that's coming from, it's the enemy of our souls 
That's his primary obligation. He's an enemy of God and us, and he wants to lead us away from God. So John's writing to the churches mm -hmm. to warn you about those who want to lead you astray. Verse 27, but you have received the Holy Spirit. You have received the Holy Spirit. You've got God the Father, got the Son, and got the Holy Spirit. You, we got the help that we really need. We must obey, follow, stay faithful to the teachings. Verse 27 says again, but you have received the Holy Spirit and he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He's the teacher. He's available to open up our understanding to the heart, the mind, and the will of God. Not only to open it up to understand, he ha he's here to help us to obey. For the Spirit, Holy Spirit, teaches you everything you need to know, and what he teaches is true. Yes. It is not a lie. Amen. So just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. So I'm going to pause here a moment just to encourage us as believers. As Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, if, you, if you've never given this attention, I, will, I must emphasize that Jesus made it possible for us to have the help to remain, Amen. to stay faithful, yes. to obey, yes. to understand. Thank you. The help is Holy Spirit. Yes. So I want to encourage you, if you've never embraced the ministry of Holy Spirit, I want to encourage you. Uh, the scriptures say plainly, uh, God is willing and he will give Holy Spirit to those who ask for him. Mm -hmm. And I submit to you, just ask for the help and presence of Holy Spirit. Yeah. There's, a, there's only one requirement for us in order to get that help, and that is to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. And whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, yeah. and you have the, the privilege of having Holy Spirit with you, teaching you, guiding you, keeping you, and, and correcting you. Amen, amen, amen. amen. So uh, let me finish up the message with the question that, came out of the reading that Sister Simon read to us today. The question is, where are you? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I want to be inclusive. Where are we? Yes. Where am I? Yes. And then the question is coming from God the Father. He says, where are you? Mm. He's speaking to Adam when uh, he said, he spoke to Adam in the scriptures. He says, where are you? <laughs> uh, I, I love when I read that and I read it uh, every now and then and we read through the Bible every year and we're going to have to start again here pretty soon yeah. uh, where are you when you read it you find you, you, it comes to you clearly that the one who knows everything Amen. omnipresent God omni, omnipotent God all powerful everywhere present yes thank you Lord Hallelujah. He knows where you are. Amen. The question is for our benefit. Uh, let's read the scripture and we'll finish up for today. The question here, the, 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 I'm going to walk through these. Sister Simon read them, but I'm going to walk through them just a little bit. Genesis 3, 1. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. Just, just remember, he was the shrewdest. <laughs> Let me say this to every believer. My brothers, my sisters, you can't outshrewd the devil. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the only one that can outshrewd the devil is God, his creator. Yes. And Jesus, the Son of God, our Lord, and Holy Spirit, who is the God, the Holy Spirit. We've got to be lined up with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then and only then can we can outshrewd the devil. Amen. Amen. 
So here he is. Satan is the god of this world. Don't even forget that. Yes, yes. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord had made. Notice that, that the Lord had made. The Lord had made. God made him. Yes. Amen. Amen. So if you need help to overcome the enemy, go to the one who created him. That's it. Uh, let's move on. One day that shrewd animal asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Mm -hmm. Of course we may eat from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. The shrewd animal says you won't die. Mm. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Okay. Let me, this is a nuance that I've observed in the scripture, just, just something to make note of. When you read in, in Genesis, uh, this, the, Moses, who wrote this, God gave him uh, the impetus to write it this way. It said, most times a reference to God is the Lord God. Here, the, the, the shrewd animal here is calling him just God. Mm -hmm. The nuance here, Lord God means Yahweh Elohim. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. I am that I am Elohim, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yes. That, in that context, when you study it, God is everything that we need. Amen, amen. And, and Satan's reference to him was just plainly God. Mm -hmm. That's just a nuance. Let me move on. Here are a couple of things to, to, to take away. Go, know who we are listening to. All right. let, me, let me just emphasize that. That's why we need the help that God provides. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The help that we have with us as the body of Christ, as the people of God, as a benefit of our salvation, we have Holy Spirit to help us yes. so that we can know who we're listening to. Yes, sir. Scrutinize what you're hearing. Amen. On the television, through social media, whoever's writing as an authority or who's declaring as authority, and yes, even the preachers that are preaching, claiming to have authority, scrutinize Amen. what you're listening to and let Holy Spirit help you to hear what's being said. Amen. Especially as it relates to what God has said in his word. Through relationship with him, Amen. See, relationship helps you to appreciate God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. That God is who he says he is. He says, I am God. Yes. And beside me, there is no other God. Amen. If somebody comes with another claim that there's some other God, then you know they're lying. And if you give credence to what they're saying, then you're calling God a liar. Amen. Oh, let's move on. Know what you believe and who you believe. Yes. Because the shrewdest animal on the earth knows how to get around whatever you think you believe and what you're uncertain about. So you need to know what you believe. Let's move on. Verse 6. Uh, verse 6 in Genesis chapter 3. The woman was convinced. I'm reading New Living Translation. She was convinced. Uh, we can get off on a tangent here to, to debate uh, order in our marriages and such. God set up a plan. He did set up spiritual oversight in our marriages, in our families. And, 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 and yes, that one was broken right here. Mm. And there are consequences when we get out of God's order. Amen. The woman was convinced. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory, glory, glory. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Mm. Amen. Human nature. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> On display. 
Most people that don't have the benefit of, of, of the spiritual truth that God has called us to would say, that's not so bad. She got what she wanted. She saw something, she liked it, and she, she went with her own truth. She went with what she felt was good. She felt was right. She was convinced. And, and here's, the, here's the most uh, damaging part of it. Then she gave some to her husband, who, listen, who was with her. Yes. You know, uh, it's been years, and I, and I look at this, and you kind of take it kind of to the side and say, Eve must have been distracted and on her own, and the devil got her alone and convinced her to eat the fruit. But the scriptures say Adam, her husband, was standing right there with her. Oh, glory to God. Jesus. Mm. So, <laughs> so I, the question comes, where are you? <laughs> Why wasn't he in his place on the spot aware of what's going on and inspired to do something about right. it? Then she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it too. So uh, let me emphasize something from this scripture because even, even the Apostle John tells us uh, in the New Testament what's going on here. But this is the book of beginnings mm -hmm. because right here we see the lust of the eyes. Yes. John said all that's in the world is the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Here they are right here in the beginning. Mm -hmm. The tree was beautiful. <laughs> the lust of the eyes. Yes. The fruit looked delicious. The lust of the flesh. I want it. Mm -hmm. And the pride of life. She wanted the wisdom it would give. My Satan God. devices in this world. My, my, my. Oh, glory. The shrewdest animal on the earth. Mm -hmm. That's where he works. He works to appeal to our eyes. Yeah. You like what you see. You yeah. like how you feel. Uh, and you want to feel significant mm -hmm. and valued and think highly of yourself. Help us, You'll feed those things. Amen. Husband was there. I emphasize the husband was there. She gave fruit to him. He ate it too. Mm -hmm. Devastating in so many ways. Uh, verse 7, let's move on. At that moment, the scripture says their eyes were open. Mm -hmm. Their eyes were open. Mm -hmm. They suddenly felt shame at their nakedness, so they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. God, God had designed us <clears throat> in a way that sin was not attractive to us. My God. Rebellion wasn't attractive to us. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a part of our nature, but when our eyes to the choice of one of the other then these human nature thing kicked in. Yes. The lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. When their eyes were open to making choices, mm -hmm. the good and the evil, the world and his influence mm -hmm. kicked in. All right, let's God. move on. My God. Hallelujah. We know our sin when we commit it. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't, Amen. Don't, don't look at me like that. <laughs> Amen. When you commit sin, when I commit sin, when we commit sin, we know it. Yeah. Amen. And I'm talking to believers. Amen. It goes counter to God's purpose and design for us. We know it when we do it. Yeah. And, and, and if we have a real love for God, it hurts us. When we do it, we, even though we've stepped across the line, then we feel bad because Adam and Eve felt bad when they stepped across the line because they sewed some fig leaves together and they went hiding. Yes, yes. My God. We know it when we do it. <laughs> and, and just so you can appreciate the, 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 the God of this world will exploit it. Mm-hmm. Shame yeah. is a tool of the enemy. My God. Yes. Shame is a tool of the enemy. Amen. 
Shame, this, I, I'm almost done now. Shame will manifest in cover-ups. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. Shame will manifest in cover-up. What do you mean, Pastor Simon? Shame will manifest in lies mm -hmm. and deception. Amen. When you don't want folk to know the truth about mm -hmm. something, you're going to lie. Mm -hmm. you, you become deceptive. You kind of tell everything but the most essential part. Okay. Shame manifests in cover-ups. Uh, if, if you've got shame about something, sometimes you want to, we were talking about this, uh, some of us were, were having a discussion, some of the men there at Powerhouse while we were working, we had a discussion, and it was a, a real rich discussion, but <clears throat> sometimes, uh, uh, I think it was just one-on-one, -on -one, me and a brother were talking about it, and said, uh, shame manifests, and when you've got some wounds in life, some disappointments in life, uh, we try to escape them mm -hmm. or we try to, uh, 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 what is it, uh, medicate or, mm -hmm. or suppress them to escape from them through things like drugs and alcohol and, and sexual sin and various abuses that are going on in our life. It's, it, it's generally a cover up. Some shame, something disappointed you, something caused you some pain, and you don't want to have to rehearse that or remember that. Mm. And so the shame manifests in cover ups, yes. uh, depression, mm. obsessions, and oppressions. As, as sometimes our, our pain and our cover ups causes us to cause other folk pain. Yes. Amen. I'm feeling bad. I'm going to make sure somebody else Come feels on bad. Come on. Oh, see, the, the enemy is the shrewdest animal. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, glory. I, I, I want you to appreciate that that's why Jesus came to set us free from this. We're going to finish up in a second. Uh, we fall in the trap of rehearsing some things and, and we go through life. And this, this is a study that I've got and, 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 and I endeavor to use this with some of our brethren because <clears throat> we get into the problem of rehearsing stuff in our lives. If we don't, we don't uncover stuff, uh -huh. uncover the shame, we're going to rehearse it. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, what do you mean, Pastor Simon? You're going to revisit it over yes. and over again yes. because it hasn't been resolved. And the resolution of it is really simply telling the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, Amen. Sometimes yes, we, we rehearse lost opportunities, things that could have been, should have been. We keep thinking about what should have been mm -hmm. and what could have been or what I ought to have done. And could have done if not for something or someone else. We rehearse that over and over again. Lost opportunities. The enemy will keep reminding us of what you should have been. Mm -hmm. What you could have been. Uh, the opportunity that somebody took from you. Uh, not only that, lost relationships. Mm. Uh, glory to God. I won't, I won't stay there, but re the enemy can rehearse those lost re yes. relationships. Yes. Somebody took somebody from you. My or God. you lost somebody who died uh, uh, in a strange way. Uh -huh. And you can't get over it. You lost a relationship. You said the wrong thing. You uh -huh. did the wrong thing. And a relationship has never been healed. And you're rehearsing that thing over and over. Yeah. And there's a shame associated. And the enemy works it against you. Yes. And you can't live the way God has called you to live. Because you're covering it up. My Lord. My Lord. Oh, glory. Ah, glory. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and finish up here. Uh, rehearse lost stuff. Mm. Uh, but verse 8, let's go on. And when the cool of the evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God amongst the trees. They hid amongst the tree. And the Lord God called to the man, where are you? Mm. They were hiding from the omnipresent God. My Lord. The omnipotent God. Mm. Hallelujah. The omniscient God. God knew where they were. Yes, yes. That was God's garden. Amen. Amen. He knew everything in the garden because he put everything in the garden. He put them in the yes, garden. Yes. Uh -huh. 
And then God says, where are you? And I just want to emphasize this. It's not like God doesn't know where you are. God wants you to know where you are Amen. and to acknowledge where you are. They Amen. said, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. Yes. I was afraid because I was naked. They were owning up to mm -hmm. why they were hiding because they knew they had crossed the line with God. And they were hiding from him. And then... They said we were naked. Who told you we were naked? Mm. The Lord God asked, have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? Mm. Amen. Mm. There are consequences to our bad, wrong, disobedient decisions. Hallelujah. There are consequences. Mm. But there is an answer. Let me emphasize this by closing out. God always knows where you are. Amen. He wants us to acknowledge where we are Amen. and how we got where we are. Amen. Here's the answer. Acknowledge the truth about yourself. Now let me say this so you can hear that Pastor Simon is a part of it. Acknowledge the truth about myself so freedom may come. Mm. That's where John 830, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So you're going to preach it. The truth shall make you free. Amen. That means delivered, liberated, unshackled, victorious. Amen. 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 When, answer the Lord. The Lord knows where you are, but he wants you to acknowledge where you are. What, what does that mean, Pastor Simon? You need to tell the Lord, I'm living a lie. Amen. I'm living in forgiveness, unforgiveness. I, I, I'm holding someone. Mm -hmm. I can't let it go. Dear God. But the thing is, God knows where you are. All you have to do is tell him where you are. Mm -hmm. Just say, I lied. I was deceptive. I didn't do right by somebody. Mm -hmm. Or I'm holding somebody because they didn't do right by me. Tell him the truth. Amen. Amen. Tell him the truth. Tell him the truth. Acknowledge what the enemy uses to cause shame in your life. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge that it's the missteps and the mistakes I've made and I'm still being bound by them. Acknowledge that before God, the insults that, that, that have been given to me and, and I can't overcome them or that those that I have given out mm. that I can't stop doing. Acknowledge it. The lost opportunities that you still regret, the lost relationships that you still regret, the lost significance, the lost self-worth and purpose in your life that you can't get over. Acknowledge it that it's a problem. Say, Lord, no one can help me but you. And here, here is what Jesus says and how it applies to being truthful. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, the thief comes but for yes. to steal, yeah. to kill, and to destroy. Mm -hmm. And I will, uh, to shame you. Yes. And to leverage that shame against your freedom. My God. But Jesus says, I came that you may have life mm -hmm. and life that abounds. Amen. Amen. Just Tell Jesus the truth. Yes. Amen. And I say this as a pastor. There are some people you can't tell the truth amen, to. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, let me say this a different way so you don't hear me incorrectly. Hmm. There are some people that you can't confess to. That's right. Amen. There are some immature Christians that you should not be talking to because Amen. the enemy will leverage them against Jesus. your freedom. Yes, yes sir. Amen. Um, here's my advice. You tell God yourself. Amen. And then God will tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Now the Lord may say, go to your pastor and pray. Or he will tell you who to go to. Or God says, here's what you do. He'll send you to the word. Holy Spirit will help you. Acts of Scripture says, Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. Amen. Amen. First thing to do is confess your faults. Yes. 
And actually, Scripture says if you, you confess your faults to one another or to the brethren, you, you, you go to a brother or sister that's mature. Yes, Scripture says if a brother be taken into fault, ye which are spiritual, help such a one. Amen. Amen. So tell the truth. Amen. 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 First John 1 5, and the message is done. This is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light. Mm -hmm. And in him there is no darkness at all. So you can appreciate why God wants us to come to truth because you can't carry this lie, mm -hmm. uh, this bondage, this sin into his presence all right. because in him is no darkness is all at all. Verse six says, if we say we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. That's why it's so important to come clean before God. When God asks you, where are you? He's not saying, I don't know where you are. Mm -hmm. He's saying, I want you to acknowledge where you That's are. Good. Amen. Amen. Verse 7 says, if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, mm -hmm. we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. Look at the benefit of hanging close to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Brothers and sisters, If if and look at verse 9. It says, uh, no, verse, if we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But verse 9 says, if we confess our sin, I want you to appreciate, this is, this is John telling us, if we walk with the Lord, we have this precious fellowship that when Holy Spirit puts his finger on something that you've been covering, you got to come clean. Yeah. So that this, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse yeah. us Amen. from all unrighteousness. Yes. Yeah. But if we insist on covering it, verse 10 says, if we say we have not yes. sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Oh my God. Amen. So what are we saying today when God asks you, where are you? Notice that he, when you hear that from God, he's saying, I want you to answer to me the truth about where you are. I already know where you are. Amen. Amen. If, you, if you're, you're, you're hooked on drugs, you're hooked on alcohol, you're hooked on lying, you're hooked on de deception, whatever the Spirit of God is convicting you of, even in this moment, my brother and sister, that's because God wants you to answer where you are. Amen. It's not like Amen. he doesn't know. Yes, yes. He already knows. He wants you to be free. Amen. Amen. Jesus came to set captives free. Captives to shame and guilt. Mm -hmm. But freedom is here in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you today. God keep you today. Mm -hmm. Let me encourage you to take time. If, you, if the Spirit of God has revealed to you that there's an area you need to deal with, Amen. You've been, you've been stumbling and bumbling with it or you've been trying to work it out. You've been trying to fix it. <clears throat> Uh, probably the most, uh, the, the, the reality is you've been trying to cover it. Yeah, you've been trying to cover it. God says, ultimate freedom is yours if you just come clean. Tell the truth. And who do you tell it to? Go to God. Yes. There's no one that, can, that will listen to you without convicting you. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I didn't come to convict you. I came to set you free. Amen. Holy Spirit does the convicting. And the thing is, Holy Spirit does the convicting so that you might confess your sin. Amen. Amen. And God is faithful and just to forgive you. So if that's you, and Holy Spirit is placing that, right, make, reminding you. So don't compare yourself with anybody else. Compare yourself with Jesus. And that's how we know when we're standing in truth.
Amen. You can always find a sorry soul that's worse off than you. Mm -hmm. And you can say, at least I don't do this. And that may be true. But the truth is, the measure is Christ himself. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Let's end with prayer today. Father, we thank you for the privilege of sharing your word, hearing your word. Holy Spirit, we give over to you yet again. We trust your presence and your move amongst us today. We trust, O oh Lord, that you've touched a need, perhaps a brother, a sister, a soul that's looking in right now is covering up something and you've put your finger on it and you've spoken to him or her today and asked, where are you? And the question is, where are you? It's not that you don't know. You already know that they're in trouble. Thank you, Lord, that you said, I came to set captives free. Amen. Acknowledge what Jesus alone is able to do, and that is to restore life, to give you a new life. Amen. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for that a reminder for us and for the souls that are looking in. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. And that is to convict a soul to call upon the name of the Lord, to convict a soul to come clean, to, to acknowledge the truth so that freedom comes, that they're unshackled from the leverage and the bondage that the enemy has endeavored to, to use and leverage against them in their lives, in their marriages, in their parenting, in their single lives, in their work life, in their finances, or in their health. The enemy leverages the cover-ups. Uh, Father, we pray that you'll shine the light of the gospel yes. even now. We give you thanks and praise today. We honor and magnify your great name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Come join with us on next Sunday, Father's Day. We're going to be celebrating our fathers in our, um, our service to open up our sanctuary. And so come be with us or join us in. By, join in with us by Facebook. We will be live streaming as well. So pray for us. Uh, we celebrate you. Uh, we thank you. And God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. So, Sister Simon, you don't have anything yes, else sir. before I finish. God bless you. We love you. Amen.